Welcome to Herbally Yours, an adventure into the world of natural medicine. Here is your host, Dr. Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse who will help you take the leap to ultimate wellness. Greetings, and thank you for joining me, Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, for another edition of Herbally Yours, right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Herbally Yours brings you the latest information about the many facets in the world of natural living. Today, my guest is Ricky Grossman, and she is both a nurse, a licensed massage therapist, and a licensed nurse coach. And she has been a student of life all of her years on this planet. She received her registered nurse degree in her hopes to heal others as she did herself through Whole Foods. Her continued path for healing brought her to a certification in Asian modalities, featuring AMA, massage therapy, and an introduction to the channels of the body used in acupuncture. She has continued to follow a deep spiritual calling. Born Jewish, she pursued many paths of religion, trying to understand their commonality. This search has always taken her back to the Sanskrit path of yoga. She has completed her Level 2 certification in teaching meditation and holds 500 hours in yoga asana certification. Ricky believes we live on many levels, the physical, emotional, and spiritual plane, and that good health involves all three. She has a beautiful website at centeringhands.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Ellen. It's a pleasure to be here. So I was looking at my website the other day, and um, I think you were at the workshop we did making herbs, correct? Oh, yes. I really enjoyed your workshop with Dr. Z, and I'm so appreciative of the work that you do. We had a delightful and informative herb walk, and then medicinal preparation, which I enjoyed now for the second time. Right, and we do that regularly. That, that was actually our first outside in-person with mask, uh, staying very far apart from each other outside that we've done. Everything else has migrated to um, virtual, but that was one we actually did. It was so great to see everybody and commune with the plants and make herbal remedies and take them home, you know, in the physical, real time <laughs> sense. Absolutely, so that made that it even great. more special. <laughs> so when you grew up, you like to share, I like the way you say this, um, that a real staple in your life was pecan sandies and Chippewa cookies. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have to say not mine. My parents were always into healthy eating, and that's why they're probably 94 right now and on no pharmaceuticals whatsoever. But um, that was yeah. certainly many people's experience. Oh, yeah. Um, I thought this was normal to have this kind of food, but yet I knew it wasn't doing good things for me. And my mother was on a semi-path of good health. She did start meditating. She did a little yoga. So it wasn't, though, a black and white situation. It was more the setting of the times, as I've come to understand, where it was a generation after the war and that there was a fast food mentality using prepared foods that were used during the war to uh, feed the army. This was all dried foods and prepared foods and then somewhat foisted on the population. And uh, I knew in my heart there was something more that that uh, there was a better way of fueling myself. And I did have a sugar addiction. I didn't understand the healing property of food as I later came to understand in, along my path. Well, so, I mean, when you say you thought it wasn't good, were you, were you suffering from any kind of health issues that were linked to the pecan, sandy, and chippewas and junk food, do you think? Or it just came more in an intellectual sense? 
Uh, physically, I had a sugar, I craved sugar, and I'd have the highs and lows, and uh, sometimes I'd be great, and then I'd binge on on sugar, and it, it just, I think, is a common experience, and it, back then, it was so lonely, as I did, I was bulimic for a, a few years, and it was a lonely experience then, especially because this was pre-Oprah, pre all of the talk shows that we have now and the, the uh, publicly expressing these sort of things. So it added another layer of being alone with my feelings, which is uh, another layer besides the physical. We talk about the emotional and the spiritual and that created a hardship for me and a loneliness. And I then went on in college. I took a few classes, which I talked to you about. Um, one was in plants, and that became a true friend for me, the healing power of plants. And plants are actually what we consume. It's our food and how they can rejuvenate the body, fuel the body, and create health on many levels. Besides the physical, it goes deeper for me. It's the understanding that these plants are healing me and that there's maybe something greater, a uh, divine power that has put these plants here for us. And that, that was my spark that has led me to this point, just that more divine uh, power that has given us these things. And it's for us to recognize and, and start getting closer and understanding more and more what this whole thing is about. The other class I took besides the plants was a nutritional battle, which then said to me, Yes, it is a battle to get good nutrition back in the 70s. And it wasn't as pronounced as now where we have Whole Foods. We have all of these stores that give us this wonderful food. And it's acknowledged that there is a path. Well, it doesn't exactly give, it doesn't exactly give us. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> true. It offers us. It, you know, there is... and. Of course, even now, there's always a battle. There's a nutritional battle, even with all of these great consumer products to be discerning and uh, to make choices that are based on something. And, and wait a minute. What about, though, you know, you are, of course, a nurse, a licensed massage therapist, a nurse coach. I want our listeners to know this because you are local and you offer these services to others with your highly evolved professional licenses and knowledge. And to find out more, people can go to centeringhands.com. But also, I know that you have a deep compassion. And what do we tell people if, you, if you're having a consult with someone and you certainly are going to move them towards better eating? You know, isn't Whole Foods a little bit more expensive as well? And doesn't that give it kind of, you know, some people can't access better food for that reason? I think it's once you are fueled by good choices, you'll find a way. You, you'll find a way. I started in college. I didn't have a high budget. I just went to whole, cantaloupes. Of course, if you buy it all prepared, it's going to be more expensive. But if you buy a whole cantaloupe, which I believe is better for you, you're, you're going to appreciate the wholeness of the fruit. And that's not expensive. It's much more once someone has done all the work of preparing it. So, yes, it does involve more time and commitment on your part. But I think the rewards are very powerful. And, of course, you can work with someone who is not leaning towards preparing foods themselves, but there always is a way when, and my, what I, I enjoy doing is, is allowing someone, helping them to find that part within themselves that then can make good choices and based on any budget. Well, Ricky, that's true because I always tell people, guess what? 
cooking some brown rice, which lasts the whole week, you can warm it up, and, you know, making a big pot of cabbage soup with one chicken in it, you can feed six kids for about, you know, 75 cents a day. And so you only have to cook once a week to do that, and you can freeze. So really, I don't take that excuse from people who say, no, I can't afford better eating. But you're right. It's a little bit more time than stopping in local, you know, junk food land, but not much. Not much. And it's huge in terms of money saving. And I was a single mother and raised two children on my own, worked very, very hard and fed them all clean food. So it certainly can be done just with a little bit of time management and commitment. Now, you realize your desire to help others, which is what focus led your focus to becoming a nurse. So how does nursing fit with holistic wellness? Because I know the training in nursing is usually not that holistic, although you went to NYU, which is really focused in some of the wonderful teachings that are holistic. Yes, absolutely. I studied with Dolores Krieger, who uh, started, was very instrumental in therapeutic touch and it, I was wonderfully delighted to find the program at NYU where I received my master's in nursing. And it was uh, totally based on the holistic movement. And um, uh, Martha Rogers, who saw life, and I thought it was fascinating because a lot of times in life we think of ourselves as coming back to the same place that um, you know, we do things and we make the same mistakes, but she spoke about it as spirals, that yes, we're making the same mistake, but it's on a higher level each time. We're spiraling and evolving. And that really gave me such a forgiving attitude towards myself and others when we do the same thing and we, we seem to be committing the same errors. And... And I began to see that I, I was evolving, that it wasn't the same error. And so that program was wonderful and very, very invigorating to know that nursing, which is so typically Western model, could also start embracing uh, other modalities. As I then went on and learned at NY, at New York College of Massage Therapy, I took a year and a half program on Eastern modalities. And this was also wonderful. It was a program designed only for nurses. So that started creating that nice balance, which I have strongly believed all these years that you need the East and the West. You need the balance of the right and the left side, the East, the West, to create a unity. And when one is too much one way or the other, it creates an imbalance in ourselves and the world around us. And then you are also a nurse coach. So tell us what kind of, and a massage therapist, you have an amazing array of training and degrees in really higher level personal intervention. Tell us about nurse coach. Not everybody's familiar with that. They've heard the word coach, but what about nurse coach? Well, the integrative nurse coach program really came about more recently, and it was answering the need where hospitals would discharge patients and they would come back within the month having not followed up on what the discharge instructions were. And it became uh, apparent that the the patient needed or client needed more hand-holding after their discharge. They were suddenly back in their old routine And that's how the nurse coach program started more recently. And in fact, hospitals, it became more uh, a matter of the economics of a hospital. They were not reimbursed fully if a patient that was discharged then came back within 30 days, they would not receive the same reimbursement. So this was an answer to the need for hospitals to be Uh, to not have that revolving door where patients came back within 30 days. Um, The Integrative Nurse Coach Program, though, uh, has not been as fully um, actuated 
because there are also other coaches that are just health coaches, not nurse, nurse coaches. And they, they have become uh, reimbursed and part of this whole process. So not, it hasn't yet, as I've seen it, and I hope and I listen out for more uh, nurses and the integrative nurse coach to become more instrumental and come into her own within the nursing medical model. Her and his, right? We love and male his, nurses. Absolutely. Do you know that in many nursing schools, the class is mostly male now? That's actually true. Fascinating. That's wonderful. Most and there's a reason for it because oh it's a, nursing is a fabulous career. Look how many things you've done. It's so flexible. Um, one friend of mine is a nurse. He's a male nurse anesthesiologist as his specialty. And let me tell you, talk about income. We're rocking. Talk about expertise. Of course, now with COVID, you know, he's working really hard because anesthesiologists all have to also be respiratory therapists. So he has all those skills to put in tubes and, you know, all those things. So he's working a little harder than he would even like to now. But it's, there's such a – all the way from the soft approach you're taking to major mm-hmm. medical is all within nursing. So wonderful. And the beauty of becoming a nurse is – as opposed to becoming a doctor who specializes early on in their career, you can be a nurse and switch from one mode from pediatrics to psychology to maternity, respiratory therapy, whatever you can move into that modality and uh, with much more ease than a, a medical doctor can. And I encourage every nurse to really explore those options. It's not always encouraged, but you can do that, and it's wonderful. As your life changes, you might want to gravitate to a different specialty, and you can do that. Well, Ricky, tell us how, if somebody wanted to come and visit with you to get what? What exactly would someone have? You know, I know you offer uh, a lot on your, that you've learned on your healing journeys, the very root, many routines that you've used to input your, um, information into your own health. And you do yoga and meditation and massage and pottery, <laughs> you know, so many different things. And you're a nurse coach as well as a holistic wellness nurse. So how do you integrate all that in patient care? Or it maybe you want to call a client if someone yeah. comes. Well, I created a beautiful space uh, that is a separate entrance from my home, and it's a dedicated space where you come up these lovely little steps, surrounded by art, because I, I think art is so important for a person's soul. Um, that's why I have a pottery studio, uh, not very large, but I do have a kiln where their uh, art therapists come and. I have a massage therapy room and then a beautiful sun-filled yoga space where I have studied with Dharma Mitra uh, and he has fueled me all these years. I started uh, almost 15 years ago studying with with Sri Dharma Mitra. Uh, And um, so it's a beautiful space to practice the asanas And I uh, really observe how a person moves and are able to align themselves in the pose. So it's multi-pronged with the yoga, with the art, pottery, uh, massage therapy, the physical, as I said before, the emotional, and as well, the meditation, which helps for a person to realize that there is a... The Ananda Kosha, which is a deeper layer we all have within us, it's just it gets covered up with media, with uh, comments, with all kinds of dust, as they say, on the mirror, where you start to lose who you truly are and can't see yourself through the dust. So it is my hope and it's my devoted... uh, expression in life to help others help myself 
in this healing journey of uncovering and taking away the dust so that we can see the, uh, as they say in yoga, the Satchitananda, the eternal, all-knowing and blissful self. So what would be the process? Someone finds you, they hear you on this radio show, they, you know, go to your website, that's probably a good place to find you, at centeringhands.com, and then what happens? And leave a comment, and I will get back to you, and uh, begin the process of um, how we can help each other. And tell us about, you know, this is a little, maybe not off topic. You tell us why pottery is not off topic with this whole discussion of healing modalities. <laughs> well, pottery is the new yoga. I've seen that written a few places, and I, I do love that. In the experience of working on the wheel, it's very apparent if you're centered or not, because when you put your hands to the clay, it tells you, and it's in a way a biofeedback method, and it makes you very much in the moment and aware of your thought process, because it is true that we have very a lot of defeating thoughts in our mind that then, whether we realize it or not, subconsciously create an action, and the idea is to become present in the moment so that we are uh, fully understanding where, uh, what our thought process is. And so pottery is, is actually a wonderful vehicle for understanding, understanding that. Well, another thing is, I wonder if you, if you do any kind of like therapy for couples or even for someone having relationship issues. Because I see a lot of people who are relationship coaches, they're not nurses, and they're not married. You know, they couldn't work out their own relationship. Now, is your husband totally on board with all these beliefs, or are you very different people, but yet you managed to stay together all these years? Yeah, my husband is very pragmatic. I go, I say he's did eat to do you know, black and white. <laughs> so, um... And it was very difficult early on in our marriage, and he does not uh, believe my, he doesn't ha hold the same beliefs. He is, everything is random, everything is random. So it was very hard early on, and I needed to have validation from my husband that what I was doing was correct. And I, as I progressed in my path, I just, I was centered myself, like that clay on the wheel. It didn't matter what his thoughts were. And, uh, of course, it matters who he is and I, uh, that he loves me. But the more I became centered in myself and not looking to him for validation, the better our relationship became. And I was able to uh, own more my own myself and um, not uh, not pick on him I, I was I didn't realize what I was doing at that time and it's very clear now when one becomes negative and leaves the path of that positivity not that you're falsely negative or you're not seeing what is in front of you but I find a lot of time negativity is like a downward spiral. So I chose to work with positivity, and that changed my relationship with my husband. Right. So I think that's really often the case with couples. Like they're looking for validation for what their belief system and lifestyle is from their mate who's totally not into any of that, but also the mate's not saying, you can't do it. They're just saying, you know, that's not my viewpoint, but yet people take it as, you know, something they need to escape right away because they're being put down when that really is just a misperception. Absolutely, Ellen. That's exactly I right. would have to share that it's the same. Um, my husband is, you know, just not into any of this stuff. But if I, if I cook organic food, he'll eat that. But if different food was there, you know, he would eat that. But... Over the years, you just get to uh, put up because whoever it is, that's going to be some kind of thing to deal with. But I think, you know, doing couple counseling is something you might really excel at um, because, you know, you have that perspective within your own life. And what about meditation? 
Uh, yes. Um, just a note on the uh, couples. I did have a couple that came to me for pottery, and it worked out beautifully and on a certain level where they were working together uh, doing pottery. It, uh, it did work out to be couples therapy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, as far as meditation, which has been something that is more recent within the last four or five years. And meditation is actually uh, the higher limbs of yoga, whether people realize it or not, there's eight limbs to yoga. The first five being much more practical in terms of asanas, breathing techniques, and uh, yamas and niyamas, the first two, uh, how you treat others, your, how you take care of yourself. But the last three, dharana, dhyana, and then samadhi are the royal path, the, the last three limbs of yoga. And dharana is really about meditation, focused techniques, which I have learned really uh, powerful techniques where you focus the mind when you're in the last three limbs, they do you as opposed to the first five limbs where you do them. The last three, you, ha you, you just remain open for them to do you. It opens the third eye. You have um, visualizations. It's really powerful, and that's where the magic is. So uh, not that there isn't magic everywhere, but it's where you allow yourself to be more taken. So uh, very powerful. And I uh, have taken with Yogi Chiru, a very wonderful teacher, I've learned uh, Yoga Nidra, a powerful technique, meditation level one and two. And I'm so happy to bring these techniques for others. Well, thank you so much for all that sharing. Um, and we're going to be ending really soon. We've been speaking today with Ricky Grossman, who is a holistic wellness nurse, nurse coach, massage therapist, and pottery therapist. And so you can um, get in touch with her and actually discuss any of those things going on in your life and how you can bring yourself into more balance by reaching out at centeringhands.com. Are you seeing people in person now in the time of COVID, Ricky? And if so, what precautions are you taking in your studio? Uh, I've worn, I wear a mask when I do the massage therapy, as does uh, the client. And uh, the space is big enough for there to be distancing. So I can work that out with uh, the client, whoever might uh, be coming, and find a mutually acceptable way for us to, to grow and evolve. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. And thank you, listeners, for joining us once again right here on Herbal Yours, produced in or near the studios of 90.3 WHPC, Nassau Community College, Garden City, New York. For further information, email us at whpc at ncc.edu. This is your host, Ellen Kamai at naturalnurse.com, inviting you to join us next week for another edition of Herbal Yours. Until then... Stay healthy.